Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I have some romance recommendations with the hidden identity trope. I normally don't care for romances where there's a bunch of lying and secret keeping, however these 10 books I feel like did the hidden identity trope well and it made sense for the story. I do have one other hidden identity rec video, I'll link it down below if you have not watched that yet. But without further ado, these are 10 more romances with a great hidden identity trope. One of my favorite, favorite romances with this trope is actually a novella. I do have a few novellas on this list, um, but this one is on Audible Plus. This is Sweet Talk by Cara Stone. I can't really talk about the hidden identity part. Some of these, I won't be able to talk about the hidden identity part like at all because it'll be a spoiler. Just know that it's in these books. But yeah, our hero in here, he is dyslexic and he uses the like uh, voice, to, voice to text, speech to text feature. I don't, I'm sorry. He voices aloud when he wants the phone to type. There you go. Anyway, um, he uses that feature a lot to text people and he ends up sending a message to the wrong person. I think in his phone, he has this woman's number saved as something else, not her actual name. Um, but they get into this phone call situation where they're talking like all the time and texting all the time, even though it's like a wrong number situation. But Elliot, the hero doesn't know that he actually knows, like he knows she's hinted like, just by the way, you know me in person. I don't think I'm gonna tell you who I am because I wanna like play into it, but you know who I am, like we've met before. And so it's him trying to figure out who this woman is and you're trying to figure out who she is. You kind of already know who she is, but um, I just adore this one so much. It's probably one of my favorite Cara Stone books ever. I love Cara Stone's writing. And I felt like the hidden identity part in here was like, so good for the story. Next, I have A Princess in Theory by Alyssa Cole. The hidden identity part in here, like, isn't the whole entire book, um, but it's part of it. Our heroine near her name is Galetti and she lives in America and she ends up getting an email one day. Like she gets like spam emails all the time, you know, like other people get like, uh, your long lost great uncle left you a million dollars. Like click this link to get it, you know, <laughs> like, you know it's a scam. So she just deletes all these emails. She gets one one day saying that she's the long lost princess to some country and she's like, this is not real, delete. Um, what she doesn't know is those emails are actually real. Um, she is the long lost princess to a country that I think was overruled. And the hero in here, our prince Taviso, he is the heir to the throne of Faleso. Faleso. He's been betrothed to this woman since he was a kid, um, but she doesn't know that she's a princess. She doesn't know that she's about to be, like she has betrothed. And so he's going to America to get this woman. And at first he decides, disguises himself as not a prince and pretends he's somebody else, that he works with her in order to get close to her and know more about her. So that's the hidden identity part in here. Um, this book is a very funny, Alyssa Cole's writing is spot on. Um, and I can't wait to read more of the books in the series. I haven't continued yet, but this was great. I love royalty romances. Another novella that I have is Big Baker by Cassie Mint. Our heroine in here is a cleaning lady for this hotel where this very famous chef baker lives um, and works at. And um, she ends up trying one of his very famous desserts one day and thinks it's literally like gold in her mouth. She thinks it is the most delicious thing she's ever had in her entire life. And no one knows this, but she's actually an underground like mural painter. She paints these murals throughout the city and no one knows who's painting them. To thank him for like his craft at baking and how amazing he is, she paints him this mural outside of his house. He has no clue who painted this mural for him, but he's gonna he's gonna figure out who it is and he thinks it's this woman he works with. So it's kind of hidden identity, but kind of not because he figures out very soon that this woman is the painter. Um, but man, I really enjoy this one. This hero was so into her, so into her. And she was like, why is this very talented man who could have anybody in the world want me, like a simple cleaning lady who just loves painting? Like he's like, you are everything to me. And I love him. Evil Swim by Katie Wilde is another one with a hidden identity part. I can't really talk about like at all, like at all, because there are plot twists and things happen in this book that I cannot Cannot tell you. Um, this is a fantasy romance novella. I will say our hero in here, he um, has a twin brother who was born a few minutes before him. And so he has the throne and he 
hates his brother. So he's going to try everything possible to sabotage his brother and to woo his betrothed so that he can be king to her throne in the kingdom she rules. So um, that's all I can say. Um, but I've gotten a few of my friends to read this and they love it also. Please, please, please read this one if you have not yet. If you want a royalty fantasy novella with like an iconic hidden identity trope or historical I Have Heartless Duke by Scarlet Sky. This is the second book in the League of Duke series. And you read about the heroine here, her name is Bridget. She was the governess to a little boy in book one. Something happened in book one with her and people know she's lying about who she is who she is. So our hero in here, the Duke of Carlisle, has tasked himself to take Bridget because she put this boy in danger. So he's going to take her to his estate and lock her up in this estate until she confesses who she actually is and who she's working for. Um, there's forced proximity. He's keeping her in his home and he's trying to come with, come, come to terms with the fact that he's falling in love with this warrior woman who uh, is keeping a lot of secrets and put his friend's son in danger. Like, why would this woman do that? In Bridget's point of view, you get to figure out why she did what she did. And there are many reasons why, and she's not happy about it. And that's all I want to say. If you want like a tension heavy, like capture captive, um, tension filled historical, you have to pick this one up. A Tessa Dare one that I really enjoyed is A Lady by Midnight. You can actually read this book soon for the Tessa Dare, Summer of Tessa Dare read along that Rachel B and Tiffany and Samantha and I are all hosting. And yeah, this one will be read fairly soon when this video goes up next month. This book will be on the docket to read next month. So uh, put it on your TBRs if you haven't read it yet. It's book three in the Spindle Cove series. Um, but a heroine here lives in Spindle Cove, which is a town full of like spinsters and for women to kind of like escape to. But there is the occasional man who lives there. Our heroine here just happens to be one of the men who works for the militia, a part of the town. Everyone has noticed that he has become like stoically infatuated with our heroine. She is the town musician. She teaches children and other people to play the pianoforte and other musical instruments. And she's in for shock when these long lost relatives come and find her and tell her she's actually like a long lost titled lady and they've been looking for her for years. But that's not the hidden identity part. The hidden identity part is with something else and I don't wanna spoil it. I know I've said the Bridgerton series is not my favorite, however, I do have to mention an offer from a gentleman by Julia Quinn in this video because the hidden identity part in here I really enjoyed because it's a Cinderella retelling and I love Sophie in here. Sophie's the heroine. I absolutely love her. Benedict in this book can suck it. Book Benedict, don't like him. I'm in this book for Sophie, okay? Uh, and the hidden identity part is with Sophie because this is a Cinderella retelling. Benedict and Sophie met at a ball a few years ago and it, like the, the person that they've danced with at the ball has been like stuck in their mind. Um, but Sophie's mother and stepsisters are very cruel to her and uh, things just happen. It very much plays out like a Cinderella book. The hidden identity part in here though was great to me because I just love Cinderella retellings and I feel like Cinderella does a great job at doing that, but Benedict can suck it. Okay, I'm not in it for Benedict. <laughs> I have two Kate Bateman books to talk about. Uh, first is the second book in the Bow Street Bachelor series, which is To Catch an Earl. This book is about Alex and Emmy. Emmy's father was a renowned jewel thief and she has been tasked to kind of take up the mantle. So that's the hidden identity part in here is that she is a renowned jewel thief, which is so cool. Like she doesn't just steal jewels to steal jewels. She steals jewels that were stolen originally. And so she's going to bring it back to who, who they originally come from you know? So that's what she does. And so our hero in here, Alex, I think works for like Scotland Yard or police or whatever. And he has been tasked to find this jewel thief, not knowing that he is uh, looking for the woman he's like infatuated with. Emmy. he does not realize that they're the same person. So a lot, a lot is going on in here. The next book in the series, book three, also has the hidden identity trope. And that is The Princess and the Rogue. This one is an Anastasia retelling. So the heroine here is Princess Anastasia, but no one knows that she's Princess Anastasia. So that's the hidden identity part in here. And I love Anastasia so much. So this book is like everything to me. Our hero and heroine meet at a certain club where people pay women to do stuff, okay? But she doesn't work there for that reason. She works there because uh, she's teaching these women to read. And the hero goes into this establishment one night. I don't think, he's like investigating something because he works with the guy from the previous book I just talked about. Like they're, they work with the police. 
and he like is investigating something like he's not there to be with a woman but whenever he sees Anastasia Anya in this book he's like I'll pay anything to be with you like you are enchanting I want you and she's like sorry I don't work here like that they don't end up doing anything Anya ends up leaving him with a kiss and running out and it is an epic kiss um and that's what I'm gonna leave you with uh, they may or may not bump into each other again um but i love this anastasia we're telling so much it was so so good and lastly if you want a more sci-fi read this one's like alien romance but the aliens all look like humans you know so not that fun in that aspect if you're wanting like a monster alien romance but this is a good read nonetheless this is claiming his virgin by grace goodwin and can totally be read as a standalone she's written a lot of sci-fi romances um that are in this like series but you can read them all as standalones. Grace Goodwin a lot of her books are mail order bride situations where you get genetically matched to your perfect person um and so Helen in here has been matched to this guy on Everest which is a planet that is full of males that um also have faded mates so she's found her faded mate on this planet but when they first meet each other the hero in here his name is Z requires her to wear a blindfold. He has his reasons for blindfolding his mate and keeping his identity from her. He was a war veteran, he is a war veteran, and he was heavily scarred in battle. And his face is full of scars and he has witnessed women and children like be terrified of his face and he would never ever ever want his faded mate to be scared of him. And so he's like, she probably should wear a blindfold when she meets me. And so the first couple occurrences where they're together, even the first joining between the two of them, she's blindfolded and doesn't know what he looks like. But man, it is so good. Like so tension heavy and like, oh, hot. <laughs> it's really good. And so the heroine is like, I want to know what this guy looks like. Like if he's gonna be the love of my life, like, I want to know who he is so there's a lot going into this one for such a short read but it was beautiful and hot to me i loved it anyways there you have it those are 10 romance recommendations with the hidden identity trope let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to and if you don't feel like commenting any of those things you can leave me the emoji that does this Shh. <laughs> anyways thank y'all so so much for watching i will see y'all soon in my next one bye y'all